Kanji is so focused on his research he doesn't even notice his assistant or the sales rep trying to get his attention. He's completely zoned out, lost in the sauce, away with the fairies. When he finally snaps out of his work trance, he's like, oh snap, my bad. He invites the rep back to his assistant's crib to chat and hang out. Plot twist, Kanji isn't just a regular scientist, he's one of the leading researchers around. My man is out here saving lives on the daily with his work. But don't be fooled, grinding non-stop in the lab is draining. Even Kanji admits he misses kicking it with people. We learn his sis passed away from an illness when they were young, which inspired him to pursue pharmacology to help others. After a long day, Kanji is about to peace out, but oh no. Homie is straight up out of paper. No sticky notes in sight. So what does he do? Just writes the time right on his arm with a marker. Exhausted, he lies down on the couch to daydream about retiring early to a small town. But when his assistant finds him the next day, Kanji is looking pretty lifeless on that sofa. Hold up though, plot twist again. He wakes up in a straight up palace with a pink haired girl named Charlotte nursing him back. Kanji's head is pounding, his voice sounds mad different and he doesn't recognize his face in the mirror. Turns out he's now Pharma Demeticis, which sounds like a medication. Pharma has no clue what's going on. Dream or past life? Charlotte spots some mark on his arm and starts praying to it like it's sacred. Mans thinks it's just a scar, but she insists it's divine. Pharma is mad confused. What in tarnation is happening? So Charlotte takes Pharma through the mansion. He finds out he's part of an aristocratic family of pharmacists. His dad, Bruno, is an archduke and the head of the Imperial School of Pharmacy. Pretty cool, huh? He sees his family in a painting. His mom, his sister, and his brother. Pharma's dad has high hopes for him, in both pharmacy and divine arts. Pharma wonders if he can do magic. The girl's jaw drops. He was good at water magic. What happened to him? If he can't remember how he might get kicked out of the house. Later, in his room, Pharma tries to control water, thinking about chemistry. It works, but he can't control it. The water comes out so fast it shatters the window and blows Charlotte off her feet. She lands in a puddle of water, soaked to the bone, but she's laughing. She's so relieved that he remembers his powers. Pharma finds out he can create and eliminate elements with his hands, depending on their chemical structure. The girl was freaking out because Pharma's dad was known for his surprise exams. She dragged him to the library to make sure he'd pass. Pharma was blown away when he realized he could remember everything he read, thanks to his new body's memories. Then, he has dinner with his new family. They're happy to see him well. His dad asks how the medicine that cured him is made. Pharma answers shyly, and his dad is pleased. He can go back to class. In class, he meets Leonore, his teacher. She scolds him for acting differently. Pharma explains about his amnesia, and she calms down. He learns about elements and deities. He asks about a rare element, the void. Leonor says in 300 years, no one's been able to use it. They don't know if it exists. In class, Eleanor asks Pharma to perform a water spear spell, and he nails it so hard that Eleanor goes flying and crashes. She freaks out because Pharma didn't even say the magic words. She tries to measure his magic power with a wand, but it explodes into a cloud of glitter. Eleanor panics and her glasses go flying off. She scrambles around blindly looking for them, knocking things over left and right. Then she finally finds her glasses and sees the mark on Pharma's arm and realizes he has the sacred mark. Eleanor tells Pharma to keep it a secret and ends the class in a hurry. Later, they try to relax on a bench. Pharma jokingly suggests Eleanor use her hands as pretend glasses. Suddenly, he sees that he can detect injuries in people. Eleanor completely loses it, thinking only a god of medicine can do that. The next day, Pharma finds out Eleanor is sick with armor itis and can't teach. His dad gives him a letter and a potion for her. Pharma realizes it's just a nutritional drink and makes his own crazy concoction for Eleanor's fever out of pickles, chocolate syrup, and cheese. When he goes to see her, Eleanor greets him wearing a knight's armor suit, still scared because of the crazy class. He tries to calm her, saying he just came to deliver the potion and his wacky recipe. She doubts his intentions until Pharma tells her he wants to keep learning with her. She believes he's the reincarnation of the deity Panacteos. Pharma insists he's just a human in weird circumstances. Eleanor decides to play along with the nonsense and promises to keep his secret safe. 
He tells her he needs her help to learn about divine arts, as he can't control his weird abilities alone. He asks her to treat him as usual. Later, she doubts whether to take the medicine Pharma gave her, but decides to take it. The next day, she meets Pharma, still dressed in full armor, ready to teach him how to control his wacky powers. Pharma is happy to receive her help with this bizarre situation. Pharma thanks Leonor for the help, but she thanks him instead. The ointment and powder he gave her worked wonders, even better than her own father's remedies. They go to train on a deserted island to be cautious. There, Leonor teaches Pharma various spells. With training, they start to get along better. Back home, Pharma practices his special vision. He uses it to detect diseases in the palace. Then he writes prescriptions to cure them. Pharma sweats bullets, imagining the firing squad taking aim if anyone gets wise to his shenanigans. He decides to make himself indispensable to his people. He prepares a special fart noise ointment for Charlotte's hands. He mixes, creates, and processes it. Gets what he was looking for, loud raspberries. He goes to give the ointment to Charlotte, tells her it's a gift for taking care of him. She's happy and asks if she can share it. Pharma says he'll make more fart noise remedies for everyone. He delivers the medicines to others. Everyone is happy. Charlotte says the Lords never gave them fart remedies before. Pharma is upset. He doesn't think it's fair to separate patients by social stink levels. Thinks about this until Charlotte says he never examined her for flatulence. Pharma wants to create medicines for those in need of gas relief. Charlotte thinks he's very kind. The next day, Pharma learns that his sister has chicken pox. They tell him not to approach, but he already had chicken pox. His father warns him to be careful. Pharma is surprised. In his world, they just discovered that immunity can be lost. Bruno, his father, coughs before going to handle an emergency. Pharma notices this, then easily creates medicine for his sister. Pharma sneaks into his sister's room and gives her the medicine. She doesn't like the taste, but takes it. Their father had said there's no cure. Pharma says he read it in a new book. They spend time together. His sister notices Pharma is different, but likes him better this way, thinking, at least he showers more now. Pharma thinks about his deceased sister and cries. The father examines the sister and sees improvement. The girl almost reveals that Pharma helped her, but keeps the secret. Pharma in his laboratory thinks about his situation. He tries to make a microscope and succeeds, wants to show bacteria to his sister. A butler interrupts. His father wants to see him. The Empress has called them for an emergency. Pharma notices his father's cough is getting worse. They arrive at Empress Elizabeth II's room. They use magic to examine her. They find she doesn't have much time left. Bruno, the father, prepares an analgesic. The nurse asks Bruno if she's going to die. He tells her not to think about that and gives her the medication. Pharma knows the analgesic won't cure her, just relieve her pain, thinking, this is just a band-aid. Others talk about calling a priest, sure that the Empress will die soon, biting their nails. Pharma gets frustrated and decides to act, declaring, enough of this poppycock. He uses his clinical eye and discovers that the Empress has tuberculosis, thinks of the appropriate medication, snapping his fingers confidently. Just then, the Empress's son enters, crying and asking if she's going to recover. Seeing the Empress all sick and miserable puts a fire under Pharma. He insists he can cook up some newfangled treatment to help her out. But his old man Bruno blows his lid, trying to put the kibosh on his son's plan. Still, the Empress tells Bruno to chill out and let Pharma take a crack at it, since she figures what's the harm. Pharma then locks himself up tight in his lab, pouring through dusty texts for a cure. Just when he thinks he's on to something, Bruno comes barging in hollering there ain't no remedy for what ails the Empress, and they gotta stop jerking her around with false hope. Pharma don't want to hear all that noise. He's determined to whip up some medicine. When Bruno starts zapping icy magic at him to change his mind, Pharma's not having it. He whips up an icy wall for self-defense, which leaves Bruno's jaw on the floor seeing as how his boy didn't even use a wand or spell. After peeping Pharma's notes, Bruno gets curious about that weird mark on the kid's arm, asking if the spirits put it there to give him the hot tip. 